Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and today we're going to do a software tutorial and we're going to look at the software of choice for design of experiments called DOE Pro. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, welcome to Complexity Made Simple and this is the first tutorial uh, which is demonstrating the Sigma Zone software but this time we're going to be looking at DOE Pro. So just clicking on the menu there, you can see DOE Pro alive and well at the top of my the top of my screen. And we're going to just take a look. This first tutorial is about how to set up a DOE table. Now I've got a little example open here um, of a of a DOE that I use uh, in my courses. And here's the key point about setting up an experiment. The first thing you've got to do is to decide what are the variables that you'd like to test, what highs and lows, what's the design space that you're going to test within, and also then, of course, what are you going to measure as a response. So this little example, we've got seven variables. You can see their core diameter. 25 to 34 tough diameter this is a little example where someone's trying to design the head of a new vacuum cleaner and they're the variables there are seven variables at two levels that they could that they could test so let's show you how to set up a doe for seven variables at two levels so i'm going to go create design and i have a few choices but always i recommend computer aided what computer aid is going to do is it just gives you a single choice for the experiment that you're considering. And what it removes from your choice is potentially risky experiments. Some experiments are a little bit more risky. Uh, you could get confused using them. You could make mistakes using them. So the computer aided list, it's the one I would recommend that you use when you're just learning about design of experiments and it just makes sure that you pick a good experiment and you don't um, you don't make a mistake unnecessarily so we have seven factors at two levels so you can see look the little radio button is sitting at two levels that means it's a linear a straight line relationship two levels seven factors there it is there is only one choice we are going to the Taguchi L12 to do this click next it then comes up with a little window where you get to type in the name of the variables. So brush diameter, 25, 34, tuft diameter, 2 and 4 mil. The pattern, one start to start bristle pattern the revs per minute 3000 to 4000 the number of tufts sixty six to eighty six the bristle diameter Point two of a mil, point four of a mil. Oops, I put two commas in there. Let me just change that. Point two of a mil, point four of a mil, and finally the uh, the carpet impact. So how hard are we going to hit the carpet? So we're going to hit it with a two millimeter impact or a four millimeter impact. You know, just something to say about filling out this this box first of all always fill the box out uh, because it makes the software work so much better it will obviously default to those minus ones and plus ones that you saw earlier and you can run the experiment that way but it just makes it so much harder to understand what's going on the other thing is you can't take type words into these boxes so if you had a substrate 
and it was hard and soft substrate or it was black and blue substrate or it was two operators, Bill and John or two suppliers, yeah, Smith and Jones. You can't type names in here and that's purely down to Excel functionality. Once text goes in a box, then of course it thinks that the the box is text rather than numerical and we need everything to be numerical. So if you've got two suppliers, you're going to have to call it supplier one and supplier two. Then click next. Then it says how many responses do you have? Now in this case, we're trying to maximize the pickup of dust from the carpet. So in theory, I just have one response, one thing that I'm going to measure, one output that I'm going to measure. However, a great habit to get into is to put more than one output here, more than one response here. And if you have nothing else going on but the pickup efficiency in this case, the other table that you might want to consider adding would be a cost column. This makes the experiment so much more intelligent because now you can ask the computer, please give me maximum pickup at the lowest cost or it will predict the cost for the pickup design that you've chosen. So it, it makes the whole thing much more intelligent if you do that. So what I'm going to do, in fact, I'm, I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm going to take two, um, two responses and you'll see what happens. By the way, of course, let me just show you. You, you, can, you can go up to 30 here. I mean, this software is incredible, really. You can do 30 responses all at the same time if you want, but we're going to do two. And then it says, how many replications would you like? So for each setup, of the process how many data points are you going to collect so we're going to select we're going to set up the the prototype vacuum cleaner and I'm going to run the test four times then I'm going to set up another prototype vacuum cleaner I'm going to run the test four times so this is driving your sample size it's driving your total sample size and this number is the recommended number so for the for the Taguchi L12 that we're going to do um, four is the four is the number that we should do. That's the recommended sample size. So I'm going to click next. I'm just going to leave it at four. Again, you can change this. If you can't afford four and you want to cut it down, if you cut it in half, it is the standard deviation analysis that will be affected. The 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 understanding of the mean is affected less. But again. You can go more, you can go less, you can take this thing right up if, if, it's, if it's a moulding tool and you can't help but make 10 every time you open the tool and therefore you want to do 10 per setup, you can change it to 10 if you wish or more. Uh, in this case it's 4 and I'm going to leave it at 4. And then I'm going to click next. Now I get a chance to name the responses. So one of the responses is called pickup and one of the responses is going to be called cost. And then I'm going to click finish and there is the finished table and what we've got at the bottom look is two worksheets so I have a worksheet that's waiting for the pickup results I have a worksheet that's waiting for the cost results so basically what I would do is I would set up row number one here I would run the test four times and I would collect pickup data. Let's put this in grams. 34 grams, 36 grams, 33 grams, 39 grams. You put the data in like that. Setup number two, 56 grams, 66 grams, 54 grams, 55 grams. They'd be the results. And you'd populate the table like that. Now that is how to set up a DOE using Sigma Zone DOE Pro. Well, I hope you found that uh, useful. Uh, if you've got any questions about that topic, or indeed anything to do with Six Sigma, or Lean for that matter, give me a call and I hope to hear from you soon.